Hello everybody, thanks for tuning in for this quiz uh, test quest walkthrough. Uh, here we go. Uh, here we have uh, just a simplification problem. So we're going to, we can tell distribute something here, right, and find some x terms, put those together, uh, put some constants together. So we're going to distribute this, this number right here. This number is a negative 4. Okay, so we're going to distribute that negative 4. We're going to get 13 minus 48 plus 12x plus 12x. Remember that negative times negative is positive. Uh, 13 minus 48. Let's not mess around here. Negative 35 plus 24x. All right, on to the next one. Okay, so uh, we have 13x squared minus 18x squared. That's going to be negative 5x squared. Okay, remember I can only put x squareds together with x squareds are like apples and apples. Uh, next we have like oranges and oranges with the x's. Okay, They're, the reason why we can only put x squareds with x squared is because they are the same thing. Uh, and we can't put x squareds with x's because they're not the same thing. Okay. So uh, 25x minus 5x is 20x, and 15 plus 27 is, let's see, 42. All right, here we're going to distribute an 8x. Remember, there's an x there. We're going to distribute that x as well. So 8x times 7x is 56x times x, which is x squared. Uh, minus 8 times negative 12 is 96. There's that x. Uh, plus 5x squared, minus 15x, plus 7. There, that looks good. Uh, let's see, uh, x squared, x squared. So we have 56x squared plus 5x squared is 61x squared. Um, negative 96x minus 15x is even more negative. This is something that some of you are having some trouble with, right? If I'm at negative 96x and I subtract 15 more x, right? I'm going to be even more into the negatives, okay? So I'm going to be at negative, um, let's see, this is 111 x, and then plus 7, because 7 is the only constant that there is. Um, next, we're going to do distribute and distribute again. So we distribute the negative 2x. That gives us a positive 14x squared. Negative 2x times 9 is negative 18x. 5 times 7x is 35x. 5 times negative 11 is negative 55. And plus 14x. Uh, we have 14x squared. A negative 18x plus 35x plus 14. Let's just make this fast so you don't have to listen to me do this in my head. Negative 18 plus 35 uh, plus 14. That's how many x's we have. 31 minus 55. 14x squared plus 31x minus 55. Next page. Scroll down. Here we go. Negative 2x is going to be distributed to all three terms. So negative 2x times 5x squared is negative 10x to the third. x times x times x is x to the third. Minus 16x squared. Remember that x gets distributed. Negative 2x times negative 7. It's positive 14x and plus 13x. So we have negative 10x cubed because there's nothing to combine it with. Negative 16x squared, nothing to combine that with. 14x plus 13x is 27x. All right, here is a kind of a big monster of a, of a problem, right? We have to do quite a bit of work. Um, maybe we'll start by organizing ourselves. We'll do f down this direction. Then I'll do a column for g and one for h. Maybe that would uh, help me uh, keep things organized. Organization is going to be very helpful in this kind of a problem, right? Some of you made mistakes that would have been very, very uh, helped by uh, organizing your work. So f, we're going to start with plugging, plugging negative 3 in there. Here we go, 2x 
2 times negative 3 squared minus 3 times negative 3 plus 4. Negative 3 squared is negative 3 times negative 3, which is a 9, a positive 9. Negative 3 times negative 3 is a positive 9. And plus 4, we have 18 plus 9 plus 4. Uh, we've got 27 plus 4, 31. 31. I am going to do all these, but you are welcome to fast forward through them and uh, not watch me do all of them. Uh, so next, we're going to move on to plugging negative 2 in there. 2 times negative 2 squared minus 3 times negative 2 plus 4. Negative 2 squared, that's going to be negative 2 times negative 2. That's positive 4. Negative 3 times negative 2, positive 6. 4, 8, plus 6, plus 4, that's going to be 18. Okay, 0, I won't waste your time watching me do 0, 0, minus 0, plus 4, is 4, 4. Okay, next, um, this was an inadvertent blank line that I didn't mean to put in there. And we'll plug in 1, 2 times 1 squared, minus 3 times 1, plus 4. That's 1 squared is 1, times 2 is 2, minus 3, plus 4. Negative 1 plus 4 is plus 4 is 3. Uh, one mistake that I saw still happening to some was like, uh, for example, uh, 3 plus 4 is 7, and you wound up doing... 2 minus 7 and getting negative 5. Careful there, you're going out of order. Um, if I wanted to add the 3 and the 4 first, by first I mean before I subtracted 3 from 2, I would need to put parentheses like that. Right? You're doing this addition first when you should do addition and subtraction from left to right. So 2 minus 3, then plus 4. If I wanted to combine these, I could do negative 3 plus 4. And get a positive 1, and 2 plus 1 would also be uh, 3. Uh, be careful in that. I didn't see it a lot, but it did happen. So watch out. Be careful. Uh, G. G. Negative 3. A lot of you, if you had written this down, you wouldn't have made the mistakes that you did. You made a lot of mistakes that had to do with the sign of the numbers involved. Negative 3 squared plus 2 times negative 3 minus 4. 4, negative 3 times negative 3 is 9, negative 3 times 9, uh, let's see, we'll just go ahead and do it. 2 times negative 3, it just disappeared for no reason, this should be a plus, it's a problem with undo in this program, uh, okay, so 2 times negative 3 is negative 6, minus 4, negative 27, negative 6 minus 4 is negative 10, so negative 37. I'm sure you hear my coffee maker in the background, sorry about that. Let's move on to plugging in negative 2, negative 3 times negative 2 squared plus 2 times negative 2 minus 4. Mm -hmm. So negative 2 squared is 4 times negative 3. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4, negative 4 there, minus 4. Uh, negative 12 minus 8, negative 20. Um, we'll plug in 0, which is going to be really uh, unspectacular. 0 plus 0 minus 4 is negative 4. That's always easy. Let's plug in uh, 1 now. So negative 3 times 1 squared plus 2 times 1 minus 4. Uh, that's negative 3 plus 2. Four. Negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1. Minus 4 is negative 5. Negative 5. Okay, and h. Now, h is the one that we're also going to graph. Right? So, I'm going to be really sure we get these right so the graph is also right. Uh, so, we're going to plug in negative 3. So, negative, negative 3 squared, minus 3 times negative 3 plus 7. Negative 3 squared is going to be positive 9, but there's a negative 1 multiplied by that, right? So this is 9 times negative 1. That's actually negative 9. Negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9, plus 7. Negative 9 plus 9 is 0, plus 7 is 7. 
negative negative 2 squared minus 3 times negative 2 plus 7. Uh, so negative 2 squared is 4, but we make that a negative, so it's negative 4. Negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 6 plus 7. That's 13 minus 4 is 11. Or 13, sorry, minus 4 is 9. Put that kind of backwards. 9. Uh, now for 0, we plug in 0, we're going to get 7. Uh, 0 minus 0, 7. Uh, now we're going to plug in 1, and that's going to look like negative 1 squared plus or minus 3 times 1 plus 7. So that's 1 squared is 1, but it's a negative 1 because it's negative here. Minus 3 plus 7. Negative 1 minus 3 is negative 4 plus 7 is 3. Okay, so we have to plot these points as well. It says to plot as many points as possible, actually, so I'll talk about that. Uh, negative 3, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, okay, negative 2, Ooh, that's 7, 8, 9, 0, 7, and 1, 3. Okay, if you plot those points, then great. But, you know, it's possible to plot more, if I were to take this at its word, as many as possible, right? So I could plug in negative 1 and, and find that I get 7, or 9, sorry. I could plug in negative 4 and find out that I get 3, right, and keep this going, uh, and plug in as many things as I can and get as many outputs as possible. But if I really were to plot as many as possible, I would say, well, I start to see a pattern here. It looks like this thing is going to have points in between the points that I've already plotted, and I bet m the future points that I might find will just be down here somewhere, okay? It's just a reminder that graphs are points. Graphs are points. Okay, this equation, we want to just have m, so we want to not have m minus 6. If I add 6 to this minus 6, this goes to 0. So I'll add 6 to the other side, keep the scales balanced, and we get 23. Here we're going to take 1 ninth of this, because this is 9 times as much as we want to know about. So we'll take 1 ninth of the other side as well, and y is 5. Here, the number I want, right, if I divide it by 6 and make it negative, I get positive 36, or I make it opposite, or multiply by negative 1. Uh, let's try this. Let's just start out by changing the sign of both sides. If I multiply by negative 1, negative 1 times negative something is just positive, that thing, right? We don't have to do it in two steps, but we certainly can. We get negative 36 now. Now if I multiply by 6, 6 divided by 6 is 1. I am to 1x now, which is the same as x. And I'll multiply this side by 6 as well. So I get negative 216. x equals negative 216. Here, again, I want a 1x, just like this. I want a 1x, not a 6 fifths x. If I multiply a fraction by its own reciprocal, I will get 1. I'll get 30 over 30, which is 1. So now I have 1x. But I have to do the same thing to both sides, so I'll multiply this by 5 sixths. I can multiply straight across. 120 times 5 is uh, 600 divided by 6 is 100. Or 120 divided by 6, that's 20. Now I have 20 times 5 over 1 times 1. 20 times 5 is 100. x is 100. Last one on this page, we have a two-step equation. Okay. First, let's get the 6x by itself. Let's leave the division for the very end. If you try to divide by 6 right now, it's more. there's more involved there than you are thinking, probably. Okay. If you divide this by 6, you'd also have to divide the 4 by 6. Let's not bother with that. Let's first subtract 4, subtract 4, we get 6x equals 60, divide by 6, and x equals 10. All right. Similar idea to the one we just did. Let's subtract 40 from both sides to start. 5 eighths y equals negative 40. Now we'll multiply by the reciprocal. Okay. 5 can divide negative 40, this will be a negative 8. 
this has turned into a 1y. Right? So now we're going to get y equals negative 8 times 8 is negative 64. Okay, let's start by collecting like terms on the left side. I think that's the easiest thing. So negative 5x plus 8x is 3x. 12 plus 14 is 26. Let's subtract 26 from both sides. We have 3x equals negative 24. Divide by 3, and x is negative 8. All right, let's start by distributing the negative 3. So 10n minus 6n plus 6, because negative times negative is positive. We have 10n minus 6n is 4n. Let's subtract 6 on both sides. 4n equals negative 18. Divide by 4. n equals negative 18 over 4. Or if we simplify, negative 9 over 2. OK. I was, I was really impressed by how well most of you did on this one. Uh, if you didn't get all the way there, you got really close. So I, I was really pleased. So let's think about what we have here. We've got we've to earn a bunch of money and add it up to $1,500, right? So if I think in that term, it helps me write the equation, right? Money earned slash found slash given, right? It needs to all add up to 1500 I'm going to add up a bunch of money here, right? What's some of the money I have? I have $600 from my parents, plus $27 from a jacket from last winter, plus all my money from work, right? How do I calculate how much I've made at work? Well, I make $9 an hour. I just take 9 and multiply the number of hours. How many hours will I work? Well, I've already worked 32 and 34 hours in uh, two previous months. And this upcoming month, I'm going to work an unknown number of hours, right? But I would add up all those hours and multiply by 9, and that's how much money I will have made at my job, plus the $27, plus the 600 Now we'll distribute this 9 to get this x out of the parentheses. We'll add the 600 and the 27, so 627, plus, you know, I'm just going to go ahead and add 62 and 34 together, or 32 and 34 together and get uh, 66. So 9 times 66 is 594, plus 9 times x is 9x, equals 1,500. Uh, 627 plus 594, 1188. Uh, we'll subtract 1188 from both sides. 9x equals 1,500 minus the answer from the previous line, 312. We'll divide that by 9 on both sides. Hmm. I know that's not right. Let's see. 32, 34, $9 an hour, 27, 27. I'm sure you were screaming at me when I uh, made that mistake. Somehow, 594 plus 627 should not have been 1180. It should have been 1221. So that was pretty impressive. So this should be 1221. Now, if that were just me on my... my uh, West, if I were doing that, that decimal would make me double check my work. So 1500 minus 1221. Weird, I wonder what I did. 279. Divide by 9 on both sides. Uh, 31. So 30. 
31 hours. Now, um, some of you did get 31 hours, but you didn't write an equation. And again, the purpose of uh, this exercise was to get you to write an equation. It's important that you practice writing equations uh, while these situations are fairly simplified. When they become more complicated, when you need a quadratic equation, it's not going to be as obvious uh, how you would go about solving that problem from just what I call a common sense approach. Uh, you're just going to have to write the equation and solve the equation to find the answer that you're looking for. So we start now while the equations are fairly simple, relatively simple. Compared to other equations, they're pretty simple. Okay. Uh, and while they're simple, while the situations are simple and we can write simple equations, we're going to practice writing those simple equations. Alright, so that's the point there. Um, that was the last question. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. Thank you so much for watching. I hope it helped. Uh, and again, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.